Hey guys, it's Miss Miklos here, and I am going to be talking about our special right triangles. And as I mentioned in class, this is one of the most important trig things that we're going to be learning this year. Um, what we're going to be learning in this lesson is going to be something that you are applying um, later this chapter, next chapter, and definitely in pre-calculus and calculus. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, in class, we actually did an activity where we were drawing on the floor with some tape and stuff. But we saw some really important things, and I'm going to zoom in here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and write, this is our reference angle, and we've used that term before. But if that is 30 degrees, and I know that this is a right triangle, um, based on the triangle sum theorem, I know that this has to be 60 degrees. We need to know that whenever we have a triangle like this, our side lengths are going to be 1, radical 3, and 2. Okay, and that's something that we just need to memorize. Always opposite from 30 degrees is 1. Always opposite, let me actually get my laser here. So opposite from 30 degrees, we have 1. Opposite from 60 degrees, we have radical 3. And our hypotenuse is always going to be Two. So some things that we saw, and I'm going to go ahead and just write out that this was at 30 degrees. Okay, when we had 150 degrees, we determined that that was 30 degrees away from the x-axis. And the way we figured that out is the x-axis right here is going to be 180 degrees. So if I'm doing 180 minus 150, it tells me this angle right here. So we're noticing that this triangle looks almost identical to our triangle in quadrant one. In fact, I have 60 degrees again, and I have our um, right angle. Opposite from 30 degrees we know is one. Our hypotenuse is two. What's going to change this time is that my adjacent side has to be negative because from the origin, we're moving to the left. And we talked about this earlier this chapter, so this is going to be negative radical 3. When I have 210 degrees, okay, I'm still trying to figure out how far away are we from the closest x-axis. 210 minus 180 gives me 30, so this is going to be 30 degrees. So I have negative 1, and the reason why this is negative this time is because from the axis it's going down. It's going to be negative radical 3 still, and our hypotenuse we talked about is always positive. Oh, I did not mean to do that there. Let's redo that. There we go. With a pen instead of a highlighter, we get 2. And then in quadrant 4, if we're looking at that, okay, this is going to be at 330 degrees. I'm still trying to figure out how far away is that from the closest x-axis. So I know that this axis right here, we can either think of as 0 or we can think of as 360 because it is a full triangle. So if I go ahead and do 360 minus 330, it's going to give me this measurement right here. So I'm going to go ahead and say that that is 30 degrees. So opposite 30 degrees is going to be negative 1. Opposite 60 degrees is radical 3. And our hypotenuse is 2. So some things that we see here, um, all four of these triangles have a reference angle of 30 degrees. And so those similarities make our life way easier because if I just can figure out what the reference angle is, I know how to draw out the triangle. So now let's actually go through and do these problems. So sine of 150. So if I'm looking at 150, I know this is my reference angle. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm going to say my answer is 1 over 2. And if we think back to what we talked about earlier this chapter, all students take calculus, it makes sense that in quadrant 2, sine would be positive. So our next problem here is going to be tangent of 330. So here's 330, so my reference angle is 30 degrees. 
tangent is opposite over adjacent. So I'm going to write the opposite over the adjacent. We could also think of this as negative radical 3 over 3. Um, honestly, I would accept either answer. We tend to see this answer more often, but I want to stress that the other one is also correct. Okay, and then our last one here, it says cosine of pi over 6. Cosine of pi over 6, all of a sudden we're dealing with radian. So you may remember that this actually means 1 sixth of a semicircle, which ends up being 30 degrees. Or we could use the skill that we learned the very first lesson where I can turn this into degrees by multiplying by 180 over pi. And I end up getting the cosine of 30 degrees. Now, honestly, quadrant one is the easiest one to work through because I know everything in quadrant one, it's just like if the angle's 30, it's 30 degrees away from the closest x-axis. So I can just go off that angle. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So we're going to go ahead and write radical 3 over 2. Okay, so some key takeaways that I want us to get from here. The first major takeaway is determining what the reference angle is. So the key thing for us to do is figure out how far away is it from the x-axis. Okay, the second thing that we really noticed is that we have um, a very special triangle here, and I'm just going to draw it over here. There's my lovely triangle. But we saw that this kept repeating opposite from 30 degrees is 1, opposite from 60 degrees is radical 3, and my hypotenuse is 2. Those values just change negative and positive depending upon what quadrant we are actually at. Okay, I'm going to go through this next one a little bit quicker. Um, if we look this time, I have 60 degree tr triangles. So my angles are going to be 60 degrees, 120 degrees, 240 degrees, and 300 degrees. And once again, the thing that we're going to see in common in all of these is that they are all 60 degrees away from the x-axis. And so what's kind of unique about this problem is that it's the same triangle that we worked with before, just this time, instead of focusing on the 30 degrees, it's the 60 degrees that is our reference angle. So when I label this, I have, and I'm gonna label these in red. Okay, there's radical three, two, one radical 3, 2, negative 1, negative radical 3, 2, and negative 1, negative radical 3, 2, and 1. Okay, so once again, that is just going off of this triangle, just instead of focusing on 30 degrees being our reference angle, we focused on 60 degrees being our reference angle. Okay, so let's figure out our problems here. So tan of 120. Okay, so if I'm doing tan of 120, I know 120 is over here, so I'm going off my reference angle. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so I end up getting negative radical 3 over 1, which is negative radical 3. Cosine of pi over 3, remember that's one-third of a semicircle, or if I multiplied by 180 over pi, I get cosine of 60 degrees. So cosine of 60 degrees is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 1 over 2. Sine of 5 pi over 3, that's 5 thirds of a semicircle, or 1 and 2 thirds. If I multiply by 180 over pi, I get sine of 300 degrees. So I'm going off of this triangle right here because I know that's in quadrant 4. Okay, I'm going off of 60 degrees. So our sine would be negative radical 3 over 2. Okay, so I'm zooming out here. I just want us to see that the 30-degree angles and the 60-degree angles really are the same concept. We're using this triangle. Um, it's just our reference angle that changes. 
Okay, our final um, set of triangles here is a little bit different. So this time we're dealing with 45 degree triangles. So we have 45, I have 135, I have 225, and I have 315 degrees. Okay, those are all 45 degrees away from the x-axis. Now, this brings up a completely different triangle that we haven't talked about, so I'm going to write it over here. Okay, so we have our 30, 60, 90 triangle, and then we have our 45, 45, 90 triangle. You learned this last year in geometry and probably thought about it as an isosceles right triangle. Our legs are both 1, and our hypotenuse is radical 2. So if I'm labeling this one, okay, my opposite is 1, and I should fill in that this is also 45 degrees, and that's a right triangle. My adjacent is 1, my hypotenuse is radical 2. Okay, there's 45 degrees, a right triangle. My opposite is 1, my adjacent is negative 1 because it's moving to the left. My hypotenuse is radical 2. For 45 degrees um, in quadrant 3, that was at 225. So I have negative 1 as my opposite, negative 1 as my adjacent, radical 2. And then for 315, my opposite is negative 1 because it's going down, my adjacent is 1, and my hypotenuse is radical 2. Okay, so we've seen we have two special right triangles that we need to have memorized. We need to know that 30, 60, 90 triangle. We need to know the 45, 45, 90 triangle. So now let's do some quick qu questions with this. Cosine of 45 degrees. So once again, I'm finding 45 degrees. I'm doing, op or, I'm sorry, I'm doing adjacent over hypotenuse. One over radical two, we tend to write as radical two over two. If you guys gave me one over radical two, you're not wrong. Um, but I'm letting you know that radical two over two is what we're going to see time and time again. Okay, tangent of 3 pi over 4, I'm going to multiply by 180 over pi. I also know that's 3 fourths of a semicircle based on our knowledge. And I end up getting 135. So I'm going off my reference angle, opposite over adjacent. 1 over negative 1 is going to be negative 1. And lastly, sine of negative pi over 4, that's going to be... Um, First of all, since it's negative, I know I have to move clockwise. Pi over 4 is 1 fourth of a semicircle. If I converted it and did 180 over pi, I get sine of negative 45 degrees. And we can use that angle, or if I wanted to add 360, I would get 315. Remember, we call those coterminal angles. Okay, the sine of this would be opposite over hypotenuse. So negative 1 over radical 2 or negative radical 2 over 2. So before we talk about the other method, I want to show us how this would look if we just had a problem um, that gave us one of these values. Okay, so I went ahead and I wrote out um, these nine trig functions. And while I'm only talking about quadrant 1 in all of these, I could really think about it as I'm talking about all of the reference angles, okay? So um, we have a few different methods that we could solve problems today. I'm letting you guys know that this is something that eventually um, we need to have these facts memorized. We need to be able to come up with it in five seconds. In fact, we are going to have a timed PowerPoint quiz next class that it's going to say something like cosine of 60 degrees and you are only going to have like 15 seconds to come up with the correct answer before the PowerPoint moves on to the next question. So this is something you need to practice at home. And I don't care what method you end up using. I'm going to end up showing us three different methods in total. Um, I'll share what I think is easiest, but it really is up to your particular learning style. So let's say I have a problem like cosine of 300 degrees. Okay, I'm going to show us two different ways right now that we could do this. 
Okay, the first method would be using the triangles like we just learned. Okay, I know that 300 degrees is in quadrant four, and this is 60 degrees away from the x-axis. Okay, so that means this angle has to be 30 degrees. I know opposite from 60 degrees is radical three. It has to be negative because it's going down. Opposite from 30 degrees is one, and my hypotenuse is two. So if I'm doing cosine, I'm going to do adjacent over hypotenuse. So I get one over two, and that is my answer. Now, notice I did that pretty quickly, and we also can use all students take calculus to check our answer. I know in quadrant four, only cosine should be positive. Now, the second way that we could do a problem like this really comes down to memorization, okay? Um, I still need to know, okay, 300 degrees is in quadrant four. My reference angle is 60. From there, if I know that the cosine of 60 degrees is one half, and I know in quadrant four cosine is always positive, that's all I need to do. Okay, so what I did, I used my knowledge of these nine trig functions and my knowledge of the quadrants. All students take calculus, knowing what's positive and what's negative in every single quadrant. From there, I can quickly determine what the trigonometric ratio should be. So why don't we try one more using this method? So let's do something like tangent of 225 degrees. Okay, so the first way that we could have done this I need 225 is in quadrant three, and it is 45 degrees away from the x-axis. Okay, so that means that this angle is four degrees. Opposite from 45, I have negative one, negative one, and radical two. I know tangent is opposite over adjacent, so I get negative one over negative one, which I have to write as positive one, and that does make sense that in quadrant three, all students take tangent should be positive. If I was thinking about this just using memorization, okay, I would think about it in the same way. Okay, it's in quadrant three. It's 45 degrees away. I know tangent of 45 is one. And I just need to think all students take, okay, in quadrant three, tangent is positive. So that would be our answer. Um, I personally think it's easiest to have the nine um, trig functions memorized, but um, that's how I think best. For some of you, if you're more of a visual learner, you probably would want to draw these triangles out, but I'm letting you know we have to work quickly. The third method is going to be using the unit circle. Okay, so we talked about this back on our very first day of the chapter. Um, where we had this actually in our notes. And we saw these ordered pairs and we very briefly mentioned them. Um, but what I really want to point out today is this idea that sine of an angle is equal to the y value of the ordered pair. Cosine of the angle is equal to the x value of the ordered pair. And tangent of the angle is equal to y divided by x. Um, notice we don't talk about the reciprocal functions, but we could quickly find those because if I had to find cosecant, I could just do 1 divided by y and so forth. Um, this is really dumb, but what helps me is I think of that i sound in sine, and it kind of sounds like y, and so I remember that sine and y are connected. So the key with this is that we need to have these three ordered pairs memorized, and I'm going to highlight them, okay? Uh, for 30 degrees, I have radical 3 over 2, 1 half. For 45 degrees, I have radical 2 over 2, radical 2 over 2. And for 60 degrees, I have 1 half, radical 3 over 2. Um, so this case, some pros about using the unit circle is that if things are in terms of radian, I just want to point out that everything that has a denominator of six all have the same ordered pair. The only thing that changes is negative and positive depending on the quadrant we're in. Same thing is true 
four denominators of four, denominators of three. So we really just need to memorize these in quadrant one, and then we can figure it out. I want to stress to you right now, if you like using the triangles, you don't need to stress out about this. You will never be forced to use this particular method. I just want to make us aware of it. Okay, so let's go through this. Cosine of 5 pi over 6. Okay, I know that if I have 5 pi over 6, our ordered pair is radical 3 over 2, 1 half when we deal with denominators of 6. Okay, so I'm just going to write. And obviously, I got that from the unit circle. This is a fact I would need to have memorized. Okay, I'm also using all students take calculus. 5 pi over 6, 5 6 of a semicircle is in quadrant 2. So that tells me only sine is going to be positive. So that means cosine is going to be a negative value. Our cosine value we said is the x value, the x coordinate of the ordered pair. So my answer would be negative radical 3 over 2. For tangent of 30 degrees, okay, my ordered pair for 30 degrees right here is radical 3 over 2, 1 half. Tangent we know is y over x. And I know this is in quadrant one, so everything is positive. One over two times the reciprocal of two over radical three gives me one over radical three, or we could think of it rationalized as radical three over three. Okay, and the last one I wanna practice like this, sine of 135. I know 135 has a reference angle and it's in quadrant two, of 45 degrees. So I know my ordered pair for 45 degrees is radical two over two, radical two over two. In quadrant two, all students, sine is going to be positive. Sine, y, so I'm going to go ahead and take the y value, and my answer is radical two over two. So to recap, the three methods that we have learned, the first one is drawing out the right triangle. Obviously, all three of these methods require some memorization because drawing out the right triangle requires that I know what side lengths or opposite are angles. The second method I talked about was just memorizing those nine trigonometric functions that are based off of those ratios, okay? And then... Um, the third method here was using the unit circle where we had to really memorize these three ordered pairs. I personally like the first two methods better, but I really wanted to show you this third method because that is how I like to solve quadrantal angles. So if we're talking about our quadrantal angles, um, we're going to use the, these same ideas that sine is equal to y, cosine is equal to x, tangent is equal to y over x. Okay, I'm going to zoom in here on our um, unit circle here. We talked about this the very first day, where with a unit circle, the radius is 1. And so I know that if I'm moving to the right, I'm moving to the right 1. I'm not moving up or down at all, so that's 0. Okay, up here, I'm not moving right or left, so it's 0, but I'm going up 1, so 0, 1 is our ordered pair. When I move to the left... I'm moving to negative one, but I'm not moving up or down. And when I go down, I'm not moving right or left, so I have zero, negative one is my ordered pair. I think these four ordered pairs are pretty easy to memorize. The other ones are more difficult because they're dealing with radicals and it doesn't always necessarily make sense. Here, it's pretty easy. I'm moving one in a particular direction, so I just need to understand how a unit circle works and how a graph works. Now, some other things that we know, okay, I know that this is pi over 2, half of a semicircle. This is pi. This is 3 pi over 2. And this is 0 or 2 pi. We also can figure out what those are in degrees. So, 
Often we are asked to find quadrantal trig functions. And these values become very important when we're dealing with polar graphs in precalculus and when we're dealing with graphing these trigonometric functions, which we will do next chapter. So let's just go through one of these. Sine of pi, okay, I know pi is over here. So I have an ordered pair of negative one, zero. Sine is equal to the y value. So it is equal to zero. And that's all we had to do. Okay, number two, cosine of zero. I know zero is over here. That's an ordered pair of one, zero. Cosine is equal to the x value. So cosine of zero is one. And lastly, tangent of pi over two. Okay, I know pi over two or 90 degrees is on the positive y axis. That's an ordered pair of zero, one. Tangent is y over x. Now this one looks strange because I'm dividing by zero. I know I can't divide by zero, so this is called undefined. Remember, if we have zero in the numerator, we would simplify that to zero. Zero in the denominator becomes undefined. So even though I think that this method is a little bit more um, time consuming for our normal reference angles of 30, 45, and 60 degrees, I think this is by far the easiest way to deal with our quadrantal angles. So just a heads up, we will also see quadrantal angles on our quiz next time. So to recap, on your quiz next time, you're going to have 10 questions that look similar to all of the questions we went through today. It could say sine of 150. It could say um, tangent of 3 pi over 4. Then you're going to have 15 seconds to determine what that answer is before the PowerPoint moves on to the very next slide. Okay, so this is something I would definitely set a timer, practice it at home, uh, just so you can be prepared. And you guys will see the reason why we're doing this is because these values are so important and they continue to come up time and time again.